Hi, my name is Rob Vary, and uh, I work for a, an outreach team for an informal science center, which means I go out to schools and libraries and perform science shows and hands-on classroom programs and things like that. Now, I'd like to say how much Mr. Wizard has influenced me in my life, and in particular my career choice right now, but I can't really, because I don't really remember ever first seeing Mr. Wizard. I mean, I, di I di def definitely remember watching him when I was a kid, uh, watching him on Nickelodeon, Mr. Wizard's World, and all that, and a few of the experiments I might have tried at home, but I can't point out any single instance that inspired me in any particular way, and nothing really sticks out in my mind. Now, that's not to say he didn't influence me, he very much did. It just means that for as long as I can remember, Mr. Wizard was there. He's been a part of my psyche pretty much my entire life. I can no more really say how he influenced me than I can say how, uh, you know, Dr. Seuss or Mr. Rogers or Superman has influenced me. It's just he's always been there and always been a part of me. And in some way or another, I mean, that definitely has influenced me. Whenever I think about science, he's one of the first images that I really think of is Mr. Wizard in, you know, his home, t showing some kid uh, a little experiment uh, about air pressure or, or sound or magnetism or something like that. And uh, so in honor of him, the day after he died, I uh, actually, I actually um, dedicated the show that I was performing that next day, our show on chemistry, to the memory of Mr. Wizard. Uh, especially our first experiment, which was a giant test tube filled with a cup of baking soda and a cup of vinegar, which blew up a balloon, fizzed up very nicely. But anyway, this isn't about me. This is uh, a moment of science for Mr. Wizard. So right here, I have ordinary Coke bottle. Empty plastic soda bottle. Now it is empty, as you can see, nothing inside. And here I have regular, ordinary balloon. So regular balloon. Always fun, not the point. Now if I take this balloon, put it inside of the bottle, there we go, and put it over top of the lip. Now since this bottle is empty, except for the balloon, I should be able to blow this balloon up. I mean, makes sense. <sighs> but no matter how hard I try, I can't blow this balloon up. That's because no matter how much I try to put air into this balloon, this bottle is not actually empty. It's actually already totally full of air. So no matter how hard I try and try and try, can't get any more air inside of it. Now, if I do want to blow this balloon up, all I have to do is give this air in the bottle somewhere to go by taking off this piece of tape, opening up the hole on the bottom of the bottle. And now, I can blow up the balloon with absolutely no problem, because all that air has somewhere to go. Now one of the cool things about this is not only can I blow up this balloon now, I can blow up this balloon without touching it. So all I have to do is pull the air out of the bottle. And when I pull the air out of the bottle, there's an area of low pressure, a near vacuum, not exactly a vacuum, but as near as I can get it with just my lungs. The low pressure in here is no match for the high pressure out here, and the high pressure air out here rushes into the balloon and blows it up for me. So, Mr. Wizard, that's for you. And when I perform my show today, because I'm going to be late for work if I stay here too much longer, I'll be thinking of you.